This is 100 days on a train in an infected apocalypse in Minecraft. I have to move around the world consumed by the apocalypse by rail, and on the way, I will meet the most dangerous monsters in the history of my survivals. My goal is to get to the so-called oasis, where there are no mutants, but on the contrary, it's calm and safe. But not everything is so simple, because gradually the map will begin to become infected with an unknown virus, and due to the infection, in the literal sense of the word, you will have to run away, especially at first, because the train will still need to be found. Throughout the 100 days the infection will follow the railway on which we will travel and we can only win if we have time to get to the final destination the territories themselves will gradually become lifeless gloomy and as dangerous as it can get the chances of surviving in an infected area are zero in this survival my team has decreased food loot and ammo as much as possible making survival almost impossible but everything is in our hands before starting this video be sure to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already well here we go let's go Look where we spawned, and I immediately see some weird monsters all around. Okay, there's a building ahead of me, and I think I'll slowly start going there. First of all, in order to survive 100 days in an infected world, I need to find some self-defense items from the monsters. A small amount of food, and preferably a train, since we can only survive while on it. The most important thing to understand right now is whether these monsters are going to attack us or not. I hope not, run! It was a serious threat to my life, so I decided to run away. There was an old building ahead of me, so I took shelter there. Okay, okay, okay. What is this monster? <sighs> Now that's a real start to a survival series. After opening the box, I went to the next room, and through the window, I saw something strange. Yikes, what is that? I don't even know what I can call it. After emptying all the chests and even finding a revolver with ammo, I decided to check what's on the second floor. You can see everything from there. You could see the railroad from the window, and you could see some plants called the Towers of the Infected. It's these plants that infect everything around and spawn as many infected things as possible. If you let them grow too much, then everything everything all around it will become infected and the only option would be to run so what do we have here yeah okay well i hope he can't jump oh nice he's breaking blocks what kind of hardcore survival is this they're breaking blocks so i need to get out of here as fast as i can and ah no 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 run 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 one hp what is that okay okay i managed to run away from them i'm gonna eat some cookies after catching my breath a bit and approaching the railroad i noticed the trolley this is our first vehicle in the survival. With it, we can begin our journey. But first, I wanted to check everything around me, and I found a village. Okay, we have our first house on the way, and I hope that at least there are no parasites here. Okay, it's just a horse. It's only our first day, and I can already notice that in this survival my team has decreased the loot way too much. Fortunately, I managed to find at least some ammo in the first building to feel safer. The second floor, so there's a box. Okay, three leather and a gold ingot. We can't make armor, but anyway, let's take it. Since I have shears, I thought, why not collect cobwebs? Maybe I can use it to slow down some monsters so that I can run away. So look, the first day is coming to a... What is that? There was an ordinary horse here, and now what is that? Now it's an infected horse, and it's best to stay away from it. I just noticed that the sun was already going below the horizon. I decided to wait out the night in a nearby building, and preferably on the second floor. Plus, there was a bed. I hoped that no one would touch me there. Oh look! There's a picture of me. Oh my god, it's cute. So it's my bed then. Maybe I can go to bed. Yeah, I can go to bed. That's good. I hope no one comes to me at night. Most of the first day, I was just running away from monsters. And to be honest, until I realized where I'd ended up. I think that on the second day, something nice will happen to me. The second day, it turns out that in the morning there was some more infected areas. This only meant one thing, you need to get out of here as soon as possible. Right under my window! Look, there's an infected area! And then another one! In the morning, I emptied all the boxes that could be found in the house, and even found the chain chest plate. Behind the main front door there was an infected zombie, so I decided to exit through the back. The goal for today is to collect the maximum amount of resources in this location, and get out of here as soon as possible on the trolley. In fact, throughout the survival, we have to use the iron tracks to run away from the infection while it's chasing us. So, folks, look, there's a bunker here, and there's probably someone sheltering there from this whole infected apocalypse. Well, since I'm the only one in this survival, I know that there's nobody there. There's another portal here, look, there's a note here as well. Our experiments are almost over. It seems to be a portal to another dimension, and we are the first in the world to open it. Guys, I'll upset you. Nether portals were already being made like 10 years ago in Minecraft. You're a little late. After Including the basement and the second house, I finally decided to get my first tree in the survival. I have to hurry because I'm already afraid to imagine what will happen to me on the 
third day. After I mined some iron, I decided to go check out the infected areas and was just left in utter shock. In addition to the fact that the towers were growing and the territory was also expanding, it could have hit the railroad. Remember, I can only survive if I use the rails. So, I decided to roll the trolley away from it so that it would have not been taken away by the infection. Okay, okay, I'm just rolling. I'm not touching anybody. What? What is that? What's that? When I got to the bridge, I looked around and realized that there was no infection here yet. But it was a matter of time. There was a second barn that I didn't check, so I had a look inside. Oh, we have a monster here. Great! The first monster we killed in the survival. So, I hope there is no one inside. Oh! So, there it is! Minus two! After making sure no one else was there, I started looting the boxes. First of all, I found Joni's enchanted axe with efficiency one. Now I had an iron axe, and it was pretty nice. I also found some feathers and bricks. It was getting dark again, and I realized that I didn't have any time to go anywhere. So I decided to get some wood and close all the holes, and wait out the night in the barn. Even then, I couldn't imagine what awaited me on the third day. Waking up in the morning, everything seemed to be fine, and I calmly ate some bread and looked out the window. That's when it became more interesting. Yeah, we have a contaminated area here. Huh? What is that? Now it was pretty obvious that I had to leave this place yesterday. At the moment, in this location, hardcore was off the scale. Most of all, I thought about how I could get to the trolley and get out of here as soon as possible. But suddenly, I was attacked. Huh? What is that? Another one is flying to me! Ah, uh, uh, carefully! Get out of here! This is my garage! I don't know how I survived, where these flying mutants came from. One thing had to be done. I had to leave urgently. Okay, my job right now is to just run there. Just run! Don't look around! Just run! Don't look back! Look, even the railroad was gone! I struggled to get out of this place, and I knew that sooner or later the locations I'd be visiting would also become infected. This was even more frightening, but most importantly, I was still able to leave the starting location. Finally, we left the starting location. Contaminated areas will spread exponentially exponentially on the path of the railway. The most important task now is to find the train. The train is the main key to the completion of this survival, because it is simply impossible to break away and walk to the end. So we're driving by, okay, we're seeing some new areas, and I see a couple of other buildings, and it's not really that bad here. Let's take a look. Here I see a hospital. Here we have some kind of barn. Around it, as you can see, there's some infected trees. But I don't see the towers that create all that mess over there. Let me remind you that our most important task right now is to find the train. But while we don't see it, I'm gonna go into this barn and see what's inside. The barn was quite ruined, but despite this, I managed to find some very useful resources, such as ammo, some food, and all the other stuff. On the same day, I decided to go mining and even found some iron. And in the evening I smelted it. In the old-fashioned way, I patched up all the holes that were in this barn and waited for the next day. Day 4. Outside there were some very unpleasant sounds, and I understood that they were the infected creeps. I decided to climb onto the roof and see if they were actually trying to get me. Um, guys, I didn't invite you to my house, and I hope that at least you don't jump too high. After a moment, I decided to go down and deal with them myself, which wasn't difficult because they were in the early stages of their development. I decided to scout the area and came across an old train station and the station had something I needed so badly. A train. Wait, wait, can you see that? There's a train there. Sheep, you see? Wait, why are you changing color? It was the best news in all four days, because now I can go on the very journey that my team prepared for me. The map is huge, and on this train we have to explore it all, but not so fast. In the cargo section of the train, I found a book and quill where the following was written. It's your train, take care of it. You can improve it, you can store things in the wagons and more. There are barriers ahead. To go further, collect five buckets of biodiesel, and then you can be on your way. Indeed, the iron tracks were blocked by barrier blocks. To begin with, I decided to throw all my belongings into the cargo hold because in fact the train is now my home great now we have our stuff in this car to begin with i wanted to visit the old station since i didn't have any ammo left i decided to make myself a bow all right we have 12 arrows that's just fine it already looked creepy although it's not the scariest place on this map Okay, 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 I, 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 oh, what are you? How are you going to get through here? Look, he turned out to be smart. Ah, half HP, half HP, guys. When you have half HP, your heart literally freezes. The huge responsibility is on you guys, the subscribers, that you should fully see that this survival doesn't give me the right to make 
any sort of mistake. We need to be more careful about monsters and this world around us. Oh, 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 oh what kind of guy is that? Back, back, back. Oh, there it is. Half HP, guys. I repeat, half HP. As soon as I entered the train station and made sure no one was there, I started looting the place. As in any hardcore survival, you must find as many useful things as possible. Because you never know when a mutant, monster, or zombie will attack you. And what's worse, some kind of global threat can happen, and you need to be prepared for that. Okay, a bow isn't that relevant anymore, really. Oh well, let's reload. That's it. Now these infected people aren't going to get me. <laughs> Look, that's a hanging fire extinguisher. Awesome. Minecraft physics are kind of funny sometimes. So, uh, I see. Oh, oh, uh, there's one. Okay, second. Ugh. I was actually pretty lucky with the loot on this train station. I found things ranging from MP5 to a sledgehammer with the enchantment of channeling 3 and power 6. It's a pretty detailed map. Look, there are some boxes here. Bread. Great. From the window of the station, it was possible to see the hospital. I'll make sure to go there as well. In the evening, I thought, we're a long way from the contaminated area and we can probably stay here a little longer, given that I still need to look for barrels of fuel. So first of all, I decided to get some wood and make myself a miniature small house. I chose a place for the house near the railway. As for me, this is the most atmospheric place in this survival. I'm sure that this is not the last base we are building in this survival. There will be locations where we'll stay for dozens of days. After mining some sand and making glass panels, I was done building my house. Okay guys, I quickly made this house near the railroad and uh, I think it looks pretty cool. Let's put everything in the house. First layer crafting table and finally we'll place the doors. In the evening, I got some wool to make a bed, made myself a bed and uh, went to bed. Waking up in the morning on the fifth day, already infected monsters were waiting for me outside the window. Moving towards the hospital, I already saw the towers of the infected. This is the first sign that the infection is slowly coming to these lands. But then I think that this is still far away. Okay, I have to be on high alert, really, and try to destroy these things if they appear here. That's a bad sign. Also, take a look. Oh well, look at how much land is already infected. Many have already noticed that the main mod in this series, in addition to trains, is a mod for parasites. But in this survival specifically, all the mechanics are changed. My team has made a unique gameplay that is different from what the mod provides. The main thing is to destroy these turrets, guys. I had quite a bit of ammo, so I felt more or less confident among these monsters. But that's until I walked up to the hospital. Okay, guys, if you see what I see, I don't think I want to go in there. But on the other hand, what are my options here? Either I'm completely devoured here, or I'm going to try to survive. So there's still enough ammo, so I can probably handle it. On the one hand, it looked like I was in a mental hospital. But on the other hand, there may be a huge amount of good loot here. Actually, this survival is probably one of the scariest things I've played. I can only compare it to SCP. There, how, how many? How many? Three? Four? Ah. I spent the entire fifth day going around every room at this hospital and finding some interesting loot. The loot was actually really good and I found some pretty good resources. But most importantly, I was able to find one bucket of biofuel. In the evening, I went around the hospital and decided to return home, but I accidentally stumbled upon a mine to which I decided to return on the sixth day. Day number seven, and behind my house you can see a mountain, and in it, a tunnel. In this tunnel, I saw monsters that I had never seen before. Approaching the tunnel, I noticed that the bridge wasn't in the best condition, but I didn't miss the secret box where there was a freight car in the form of a platform. Hopefully, we'll be able to attach it to our train in the future. So I basically found a train car? <laughs> the next stage of my super secret mission was to break some oak and bridge to the tunnel, which I successfully did. The first thing, I walked into the tunnel was when I noticed some glowing blue mushrooms. It was weird, but I continued going straight. Good evening, good evening. So folks, I have bad news. I ran out of ammo for both the MP5 and the revolver, and my bow is half broken. Given that I'm going down into a place where the danger is, I... I don't think that's the best idea. So, something interesting that I found is biofuel, as well as a cool figure of Enderman, which I of course took. Wow, that's an Enderman! Cool! So, I really hope it won't be the... Ah! Uh, uh! What is that? Do you see who that is? I didn't compete with these monsters. Yeah, I guess I missed something mega interesting, but I'm not going to take any chances, guys. I only have one life. I remind you that I'm playing in hardcore mode. It's a really dangerous place. I'm not going in there again. In principle, the situation was kind of calm, so I thought I'd stay here for a few more days to check everything out. So I decided to make myself a small wheat farm because I had quite a little food left. So I went down to the waterfall to get some water. So guys, 
what's that? And what's going on here? And well, secret chest? You serious? Put a secret chest in a chest? I have the best team, guys. When I ran home, I decided to finally make my own little farm. I plowed the ground, collected seeds, and planted them. But on the same day, I noticed a very strange thing. The foliage began to turn black, and that meant only one thing. The infection is already very close. Okay, I need to find the last bucket of biodiesel. I don't even know where I can do that. At that point, I needed to find the last biodiesel, and I found a small path that led behind the hospital. Already there, I met flying infected monsters. We had to hurry up. Phew! Yes, done. Okay, look, look, it's... that's probably where I need to go. I came across some scientific abandoned camp, and the monsters were already here. Let's take a good look now, maybe I can find something here. So, there's a box here, there's some ammo for the MP5, and a golden apple. Where's my biodiesel? I don't believe that, I just won't have time to go anywhere else. But it's good that I finally found biodiesel. I also found some body armor and a small note from scientists. We set up our own scientific camp here to study the contamination of the territories. I hope this doesn't pose a danger to us. Us. To the guys who wrote this, you don't even know what a danger this poses. We need to get out of here urgently. I looked through everything I could. It's already evening. Through the towers of the infected, I made my way to the train. I thought it'd be enough for me to just pour biodiesel, but no, I had to wait until the train warmed up. It wasn't until nightfall that I was able to move. And from that moment, the second part of our survival officially begins. We finally fully begin our 100 days of hardcore on a train in an infected apocalypse. Our journey has begun. Throughout the night, I drove along the mountains until I came across a very interesting place. This place, more precisely the dungeon, is called the Radioactive Zone. Such dungeons are scattered throughout the map, and in them you can find the most valuable thing that is in the survival, SKLK. In this survival, it is used as the currency to buy different things from the merchants. This is the rarest item in this survival, and in one of these such dungeons there is only one role. I needed to pick it up. Okay guys, I really want to go to this dungeon. These dungeons are are the coolest thing that can happen in this survival. That's where we can get the trading currency, with which we can use it to trade for really cool things. At first, I thought I shouldn't even go there, because I didn't have any food and only a bow. But at the last moment, I changed my mind and decided to go there for the sake of content. There's... look! There's some kind of new monster. Okay, I just hope I have enough arrows to deal with them. Good thing I at least had a first aid kit and a gapple. Great, there's this weird spider left. That's it. Let's quickly see what loot we can find and get out of here. Here it is, guys. This is the most important artifact that there is in all survival. By the way, there was a cave nearby, which I also decided to go into. There, I found one diamond and quite a lot of iron. It was time to move on because the road ahead was really long. By the way, the Montfort trains is so cool that you can even walk on it. Look at how beautiful my train rides along these magnificent mountains. The map is very beautiful, but there will be more to see. I was on my way for the entire 10th day. There was nothing interesting around at all. Only the road and occasionally the infected running at me. Guys, I just love riding this train. Just a child's dream. By the way, I can tell you that in addition to the fact that I can walk around the booth, I can also walk all over the train. From the fry car to the platform. Look, the train is going at lightning speed and we're just walking on top of the platform. On the morning of the 11th day, I rode along a beautiful dam, but there was a small town ahead. This was my chance to finally find food, fuel, and other resources. Basically, we have to look for resources, guys. We've driven through this beautiful dam, and now we're going to see what's in this town. I can already see our guests in the distance. I only have 16 arrows. That's really all I have. Let's be careful. So, the first one is already on the way. So, this building looks like we have to loot it. There's barbed wire everywhere, scattered garbage, and abandoned cars. I didn't really want to stay in the city for too long. I decided to quickly loot all the buildings and go on my way. I would like to get away from the infection, to be honest. So, we're going to the house. I'm already guessing there might be someone here. Yeah, of course! In addition to finding quite a bit of biodiesel, I also found a lot of ammo, food, and other interesting items. It motivated me to go all over the city. This is all the loot I found in the city. Well, now I had to move on. I spent the entire 12th day on the road again. The map is very large. And finally, just before the night, I managed to meet something in Interesting. I'm a little tired of driving in this taiga. Oh look, there's a house and there's uh, and a monster. Break, break, break. Okay, let's get off the edge. So there's a building here and I can already see a really scary infected monster. So 
Okay. Huh? How much HP do you have? Ah, 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 half HP, half HP, half HP. Run, run. Oh, did you see that? He left me on half HP. He dropped long sleeved armor. Huh? So there's a building here. I see some more infected. I think that I can turn off the engine and have a better look around. Survival for my team is also so amazing that you never know what they're going to come up with. And yes, it looks like an ordinary forest ruined house, but you have no idea what secret it was hiding. Okay, let's see what we have here. Look, a golden axe, glass bottle of course what can you expect Ooh, leather pants leather pants are good biodiesel and there's a book with a pen yeah my search continues i don't know if i'll ever be able to get there we need to go down and check the supplies it was a very important note but i couldn't understand one thing what kind of supplies were mentioned in the book knowing my team most likely they made some secret thing here i thought it was very possible some kind of basement or underground bunker and of course i found a block that's different from cobblestone and thought why not dig here okay guys look what I found. It's some secret underground bunker just in some hut in the middle of the woods. Okay, that's interesting. Let's go down. So what do we have here? Yeah, first aid kit, more biodiesel. Okay, guys, now nah, we're in business. First, the backpack, which we're going to put on right away. Great! Look at how much inventory space we have. We can hide anything here, as well as an AK. How many survivals I went through with him, and he is with me again. In addition, there was a book on the table that talked about a certain place called the Oasis, where some person is trying to get there, just like us. The book says that maybe it can start all over again. I hope that we can get there and survive these 100 days. I thought it'd be a great idea to spend the night here and keep going in the morning. Good morning, at least I now understand where we need to go. Well, let's start the train, warm it up, and keep going. Sooner or later we'll get to that place and stay there for a while. Make a house and explore what's there. Friends, I see something that looks like a military base, and I'm approaching it. I really hope that I'll be able to find something good there. Honestly, I'm starting to love my train. Okay, I want to show you the resources that I have in these two of my wagons. So basically, in this cargo hold, all the things that I have in this survival. And it looks pretty good. By the way, I think I'll put on diamond boots and an iron chest plate and take some ammo with me, because nobody knows what awaits me in this military base. Basically, we're going to save ammo. I'm going to try very hard to do that. Well, actually guys, that's the kinds of things I have. For reference, here's a look. Hopefully, I'll gather more and more resources over time. In general, if you ask me what else I could call this survival, I would call it the Nomad's Way, because we are constantly moving. In the meantime, I had already approached the military base, and it turned out, of course, not without surprises. Ah! What kind of monster is that? Oh! Ah! Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god! Ah, oh my god! 3 HP! What? That's... What a monster! Just miraculously, I ended up on the railroad, and he was kind of lagging out on it. No, 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 no! Yeah, guys, sooner or later it had to happen. The boss killed me. Then there was this. After clicking on the respawn button, I appeared in a tiny cube, and a second later, I was thrown out of the world. It really is the hardest survival I've played. Forgive me, we've come this far, and I didn't even know what to do next. I called my main builder and asked what I should do, to which he replied that he could give me an extra life. I didn't want to tell you this, guys, but I decided to do it anyway, as everyone should know how it happened. Yes, I'm wrong, and not everything goes smoothly. The main thing is to admit your mistakes and move on, no matter what. The team made concessions to me and gave me a second chance. They said that this survival is really difficult and they allow me to continue. With some of their techniques as programmers, they pulled out the world and were able to restore it. But this is the last time and there will be no more attempts. So I continue to play in hardcore mode using the extra life. And if I die now, there will be no way out. So guys, I found a place where he can't get me. I think I'm safe under this tree. Look, huh? huh? He's breaking the leaves, just like that. After this situation, I was more careful. Every few seconds, I try to dig a hole and restore my health. Oh, guys, Jesus. How much time did I spend killing him and he didn't even drop anything of value? This place could be called an amusement park. Each monster had its own characteristics. This one's throwing some kind of glowing stuff at me. Finally, after defeating all the monsters, I started to explore the military base. It turned out that there was a lot of really good loot. So, okay, a nice amount of ammo. Hopefully, we can find a lot of good re resources here. Guys, did you 
see that? But of course, we should not forget about the infection, which will always try to catch up to us. And the further we survive, the faster it will come. Nevertheless, now I still have to loot the military base. It was necessary to loot the tower in the middle of the military base. And for a good reason, because I found a rifle and ammo. After saying goodbye to the military base, I drove on. But I didn't go far, because there was a tourist camp nearby and it was already evening, so I decided to stay there for the night. 15th day, early morning. After looting all four vans, I decided to move on. The road to the next interesting place on our way was very long. But on the 16th day, I finally got to the place where I got really terrified. This place was a railway depot with its own characteristics. Let me remind you for the millionth time, I'm playing hardcore, so I'm very careful. If I see something on the way, I'd rather stop the train and calmly walk around it. That's what I did this time. Okay, okay, let's go very carefully. Oh, huh? How many of these things are there? Oh my god, oh, oh, oh my god. Okay, okay, just run, 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 run. Also, this one, super mutated. Oh, huh? Take a look at this. And well, guys, honestly, I'm not really afraid of you. I don't even know what would have happened if I only had a bow and arrow. Perhaps I would have probably died. So guys, let's eat. In any weird, stressful situation, you need to eat. So much loot. I'll have level 30, guys. After dealing with the mutants, I saw something beautiful and incredible. Awesome! Look, it's a real steam train. That's what the original trains look like, not these fuel power trains. Look, guys. Oh my god, it looks so sick. I also found another freight car. In it, we can store our fuel. Very convenient for long trips. I decided to stay here for the 17th day. Waited till it was morning and with the sunrise went to loot the depot. And there was a lot to loot. After finding a bunch of useful resources, I decided to go further. But I didn't drive for long. On the way, I saw an outpost. But more than that, this outpost stood on the border of a very serious location in this survival. This swamp. I left my train about 150 meters away from the outpost and decided to get closer trying to figure out if they were friendly or not. But literally two minutes later, everything was clear. Okay, 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 ah! There's even more snipers there. I just had to go through this outpost because my team said that there was a hyper, super, incredibly interesting location. It was hard. Yes, I spent almost all the ammo, but you won't believe it. I finally went through. Okay, guys, it's... Take a look. Why did they shoot so many arrows at me? I'm like a hedgehog. Interestingly, having walked around the entire outpost, I only came across a couple of chests that had only sticks and arrows in them. This place is trash. There was no loot here at all. But there was a passenger car. It's a very cool thing and I'll take it with me. I'll show you when I attach it. On the evening of the 17th day, I decided to go further and I'm finally ready to present you the full-fledged location of the survival. The swamp. Previously, there was a wide river, but over time, of the apocalypse, this area was transformed. The difficulty of the location is average. There are more monsters than usual. On the location, there are two skulk deposits, one boss, as well as a friendly clan, the surviving scientists. Perhaps they will give me a task to complete. The sun was sinking below the horizon. Mutants began to appear all around, and I had to urgently choose a place where I would spend the night. This house caught my attention, and I thought it was a good option. I hope that at least in the house, there will be no surprises. So, infected, uh, and a few of them, as I can see. With all the whole sea, I went to bed. Day 18. Today, I finally realized where I was and was ready to scout the area. Okay, friends, good morning. Well, today, we're starting to explore this location. Right after leaving the house, I was immediately attacked by monsters, but having spent all the ammo, I killed them. Next, I walked around and decided that I wanted to make my house here, because no one knows how many days or even dozens of days we'll stay here, because the location is really massive. I chose a place next to the railway and near the water. I decided to make a house there. On day 19, I finished my build. It turned out pretty nice and modest. First of all, of course I have a bed here, I have these furnaces and this chest that is still empty. But right now we can put all of our things in here of course. I'll leave some of it on the train, because sooner or later we'll leave this place. There was also an abandoned tower next to my house, and I was really hoping to find some good loot. And I found some. Okay, look, scorpion, not bad, even two clips. So, another chest, we have a wizard book here, and cookies, great! From the tower, the view of the nearest terrain was very well open. First, I saw a plane in the distance, it was interesting, and I was pretty curious about this building. I decided to go there right away. It turned out that this was the very base of surviving scientists. On the ground floor, there was also a merchant, with whom you could bargain with Skulk. Look, railroad cars, armor, guns, and all the cool stuff. We're definitely going to have to buy something here, but we're still pretty poor. We don't have that much skulk. Though the second floor was more interesting, I met a man there named Ogarik. Apparently, it was their commander, and he gave me my first assignment. 
Tai, what brought you here? Do you have any assignments for me? We settled here a long time ago and are in search for Skulk. Our fighters were injured after the last search and they need help. If you can find five blue petals, we can help them and you will receive a reward. I accepted the task, guys. It seems that we need to go looking for some flowers or petals, whatever they were called. But on day 20, that wasn't what I was concerned about. I decided that I should make a farm because I had no food at all. So I began looking for seeds when suddenly I noticed something interesting out the corner of my eye. I hope that I find food because except for these three cookies, I have nothing left. As I got closer, I realized it was a radioactive zone. So here we could find some skulk. Ooh, a cake! Great! And yes, no wonder, I found Skulk. 21st day, morning, and I finally started building my farm. Oh, look how beautiful our farm turned out to be. Cool. On the 22nd day, I went on my short journey through the swamp and immediately found a plant from which the petals of the blue flower fall. Great, now we need four more pieces, but also, besides that, I found another very good mode of transportation in this survival. What did I just find here, guys? Awesome! What did I find? How do I use this? After about three minutes, I finally figured out how to use this thing. The animation of this boat and me looked just incredible. Now I could swim through the swamp as much as I want. There's monsters right here. Excellent. So who fell there? I see you. There wasn't much time till the night came, but nevertheless, I decided to swim to the destroyed house and I didn't regret it. So quietly, I hear a monster. Found it. So... No, another pedal is needed. Just one more. Oh my god, ammo! Ah, I left the AK on the train. Ugh. Day 23. So far, I think that this is one of the largest maps that my team has prepared for me. Because by the time I swam and found the next interesting dungeon, it was almost evening. It says gasoline. The only problem is that I have very, very little ammo left. I don't even know if I can handle it. By the way, yes, another distinguishing feature of this particular survival is that there is very, very little ammo, as well as food and resources, which makes this hardcore survival twice as difficult as usual. And that's why this time I had to retreat and come back here a little later. Oh yeah, I still have a scorpion for sure. So that's it? The ammo ran out? Day 24. The first thing I saw when I came out of my house are monsters. The beginning of the day, of course, is interesting. The first thing I did today is made my own observation tower so that huge mutants could be seen from afar. Today, I wanted to explore the surroundings of this location. Fortunately, I had a boat on which I could safely move around the swamp. For those who didn't watch the last episode, I will tell you. The point of the survival is to get to the final destination, which is called the Oasis. And we can overcome a huge distance by train, fighting with thousands of infected monsters and passing through various locations. And we are currently in one of these locations. Exploring these locations is very important because we can find resources that will be needed in later stages of survival. But you can't just go through all of these locations so easily. In this place, the swamp, in order to drive further, you need to complete all the tasks of the survivals, the base of which we found in the last episode. And of course, I'm just very interested in exploring this content-filled world that my team has prepared for me. And yes, the first thing I decided to do was to visit the gas station because in the last episode as you remember the monsters just didn't let me do it come on who would want these flying creatures as pets i honestly wouldn't like that yes in the last episode the infected forced me to retreat but today it's not gonna happen again okay guys the main thing here is to keep calm and maneuver maneuver okay can we be friends maybe peace Tell me, what do you want? Get away from me! Very careful. The first thing, of course, is to check what's in the trash can. And in it, we'll find ammo and a stick. Not bad. Oh, I can hear someone else. There's somebody else in here. Huh? What? I, I don't even know what to call it. After dealing with the mutant, I began to search the gas station. I found a cute plush creeper toy, an interesting note, as well as a very unusual object. Look, there's this object called spontaneous events. Well, what's that? Huh? huh? Where did it go? Look, what? What's in my lower left corner of the screen? What is this line? What I found by accident in this survival made it five times as difficult. Now, after a certain period of time, random events will occur on the map. We can track them with the help of line of the events. As soon as a certain icon reaches the arrow, this event occurs, and we never know what kind of event it will be, good or bad. We can only guess from the picture. It wasn't until later that I realized how hardcore this update was. 
Good morning, friends. The 25th day began with bad weather. As you can see, I made myself this window so that I could see what is happening outside. On the 25th day, I decided to go to the survivor's camp to finally complete the task, because I had collected all the pedals that I needed. Okay, let's walk on foot, because there's no point to use the boat. Basically, friends, the most important thing is that our train is standing still, not going anywhere. Now we have to continue to explore that territory, because I don't know what's there at all. Well, first of all, we'll complete the task to already deal with everything here. When I got to the survivor's base, I came to complete the task. In return, I was thanked for my help and given one skulk, and also offered to take a new task. I of course agreed. Our guys went missing. They went on a little hike and they're not getting in touch. This job is serious. I cherish every person there. Can you go and check what happened? I hope they're fine. These are the coordinates of that place. There are skyscrapers there, and be careful. The weather cleared. On the same day, I decided to collect my weed because it was all ripe, and I also went to my train to grab a trolley so that I can conveniently move around the swamp because there are several railways here. Okay friends, the weather has cleared and we're going on our journey. Like this friends, we're riding our trolley. Look at how cool it looks and we're going 70 kilometers an hour by the way, wow. First of all of course, I wanted to complete the task but in addition I also thought that it'd be cool to explore new places. Okay friends, I'm entering a new location. Although it's still a swamp, it still feels new. I had an option in which direction to go and I decided to to go left to the high risers and quickly try to find survivors. Okay, look, there are some swamp dwellers here. Look at that swamp monster, he just destroyed a parasite. After dealing with a small group of infected, I decided to wait out the night somewhere because it was too late to return home. And I noticed such a house, a barn basically. I decided to seal all the holes and wait for the morning. Okay, friends, good morning. It's more or less calm outside, except that there, I see some kind of wings. Oh, ha ha! You scared me! Survival is really hardcore because I have this much ammo left and only my axe. So when I entered the skyscraper, I immediately began to look for useful and interesting loot. But there were problems with it because I remind you that there is very little loot in the survival, which adds even more difficulty. Yeah, not to say that there's a lot of loot here. I'm really hoping to find some ammo. I'll go carefully because the house is pretty ruined. I think I'll just break these doors down. Okay, an Uzi magazine. Great! Oh! There is some kind of port outside the window. Some ammo for the AK-47. But I have a 74. Ugh, it won't fit. I decided to go up to the top floor because there might be something cool on these rooftops. And I wasn't wrong. There was a chest with some ammo for the AK. Look, who's sitting there? Uh, maybe it's a survivor. Okay, I have to go check it out. In order not to go down, I decided to dig up some blocks and bridge to the second skyscraper. But of course, I was attacked by a monster. In the moment, I almost died, thus ending the survival. Ah, uh, well, get away from me. Uh, do one half HP. Do one half HP. We need to eat some cookies. Fast! And so I began to bridge to that very skyscraper. And all of a sudden, I was attacked by a bird. I don't know how I survived. It's just a miracle. I have to be very careful, especially with these big monsters. She could have thrown me off the bridge and that would be the end. Look, it seems to be the survivors. At last, we need help. Report to the captain. Let them bring reinforcements. It was just great news. I found the survivors. So it was possible to complete the task. But first of all, I decided to go home because it was already evening. Good! Good morning, friends. I woke up and noticed this, this weird icon. Can you see it? I don't even know what it could be, but let's wait until it gets to the arrow. And also, as you can see, I have absolutely no food and I'm hungry. I have five cookies left. I definitely think we need to harvest the wheat and make the second floor for our farm. I knew that there was no point in making a cool fancy base because our most important base would always be our train. But at the same time, the food was running out and what options did I have? I decided to make a second floor for my farm to grow more wheat at least for a while. I spent all my logs on the farm, so I had to restore the reserves. On the 28th day, I was gathering wood. On day 29, I decided to complete the task, for which I received another task and skulk. According to our new mission, somewhere nearby there is a bunker where a very large monster lives, apparently in the form of a boss, and we need to destroy it. Throughout the survival, I gathered four skulk and decided to go to the merchant. For a long time, I was choosing what to buy and... Piranha launcher. Launch a dangerous omnivorous fish at an enemy target. Mm, sounds good. It turned out that this gun just didn't want to shoot, but at one time in the chest I found some dead piranhas, and perhaps this is the ammo. Okay guys, 
I think I have some piranhas somewhere in the train car. I remember looting them. Okay, 11 pieces, look. And now it should work. Let's give it a try. Awesome, look. Let's help the piranha get into the water so that it's in its habitat. Hey, why are you biting me? Okay, guys, with this thing, I think I'm unstoppable. On the 30th day, I went to explore new places. Don't eat my lever. So, uh, come on. I don't think this works very well. Why did the piranha become like a head? <laughs> what is this? In a sense, this weapon with piranhas is simply useless, but very fun. So, guys, I need to find Skulk here. Maybe it's in that box. Yeah, it's in that box. Look, there's also a bunch of mags for all the guns. Let's see what else is in here. A cauldron with an awesome, probably delicious soup. After looting up this dungeon, I decided to go further along the way of the railways. There, I saw a huge shed. By the way, it looks like a building from a very famous popular game. So, come on, piranhas, don't let me down, please. Come on, you got this. I can definitely say that this is the most useless weapon that I have ever used. Entering the building, I saw a small parkour area waiting for me. And at the end of it, I found a box with a book and quill. Finally, my developments have yielded results. I invented this clock. They can track the stage of the infection of the planet. It, but it is unlikely that it'll be useful to anyone. Mm, nothing is happening. Maybe they need to be cleaned. I'm not sure. In the middle, there was this train. It looked very interesting. And there was also enough boxes around, so I decided to concentrate on finding the best loot possible. I didn't notice how dark it was, so I decided to go home. Day 30. I got so carried away with exploring the location that I completely forgot about the infection. And it was already approaching my house. No way! Look, while I was completing the tasks, I didn't even notice. What? It turns out that the infection is already here. And the beacons are also here as well. Oh my god. Look at how big this is. The monsters are already spawning here. Okay, we need to get out of here as quickly as possible. I already knew that I would soon have to leave this place. So I started to complete the tasks of the survivors as soon as possible so that the road would be open for me okay guys we have to hurry i want to go there now and see what kind of towers there are but you understand that the infection is already very close and i feel that in the coming days we should definitely get out of here in the future guys if you play in the survival then my most important advice is to watch the infection because if you're not careful it will completely capture you and there will be no options left the infection was already approaching and i still decided to loot the locations which i haven't explored i don't know what you would do in in my place maybe you will say i'm a fool i hope you don't think that way though but i was too interested for this i was willing to risk my whole survival and i can definitely say that going here was not a mistake because i found some fuel for the train the train doesn't work without it and as you know if the train stops we won't be able to escape from the infection and in this case the survival will most definitely end i didn't waste any more time and on the same day i went to the bunker where there is some kind of big monster okay friends since time is running out i decided to first of all deal with the boss who should be in this bunker okay apparently according to these things this monster has the ability to break down doors and use them like some kind of barriers by the way it is closed here maybe there's some other entrance okay i found it let's go all right watermelons ammo excellent going into this abandoned bunker i didn't find any monster only ammo gapples and other resources the bunker seemed to have nowhere else to go but when i dove into the pool i saw a secret passage after swimming a little further i fell into a room you could see a cave and and here a monster was waiting for me. Oh my gosh, and here's a super boss. Guys, a terrible ancient mummy. I don't even have any blocks left. Oh my god, where did I end up? This boss summoned its minions, smaller mummies. I fought a similar boss in the nuclear apocalypse, but here he was very powerful. Come on, a little more. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, yes, let's go. First of all, so much XP dropped from the boss. And also in the box, I found this cute creature. I think it's some sort of plush toy. I also found a hole in the underwater cave and I was able to get out. Okay, the sun will be setting soon. For starters, I have to put all my things away because I have a full inventory. On the morning of the 31st day, I decided to harvest the wheat, make myself some bread and go complete the task that I destroyed the monster. Oh, you've done it. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Good luck. We've opened the way for you and we'll fight the infection here. We'll hold it back as soon as we can. As a reward, take a few skulks. That was great news. I immediately went to the merchant and checked what I could buy. So guys, they gave me five skulks. I think I'll buy myself this fright car so I can put all my things in it. And that's it. I'll save the rest for some other day. 
By the way, if you think I'm not paying attention to the strip in the bottom corner, no, I'm paying attention to it. The icon is moving in some chaotic order, but mostly in changes at night. After walking around this place for a little bit, I saw a plane that crashed and there was a huge number of mutants around it. It was a massive brawl. There is actually so many of them here. Look, someone tried to make a canopy here, like their mini base. Okay, there's diamonds, ammo, wheat. Okay, ammo. Oh, skulk, great. After that, I was pretty lucky and found another skulk. I decided to move on that day because time was running out really quickly and the infection could soon catch up to us. And then something unforeseen happened. You could see that the icon almost reached the arrow and for a reason, because it was at this point that the event occurred. Minecraft froze for a second and after that, a horde of zombies appeared. What's that? My game crashed. Oh my God, look, look at where the icon is. It's right on the arrow. I had to defend myself. It was so unusual to look at these green standard zombies after I had lived so many days in the zombie apocalypse. Okay guys, I've dealt with all the zombies. They even broke my chest plate. Oh, this is just insane. The place where the massacre with the zombies occurred is an industrial zone. I found a lot of fuel and ammunition and decided to go back to the train. I then drove the train closer to the zone because I was afraid that during the night the infection would reach me. W what are these spawning? Oh my god, let's destroy them. Okay, that should give us some time, but I feel like this isn't good at all. That's where my train is right now. I want to hitch another wagon that I bought, put all the things in it and get out of here as soon as possible. Okay, skulk, a wagon, wheat, let's take everything we can. So we have some inventory space here. We're gonna throw all of our resources and keep going. Okay, I poured all the fuel into the train and now we're gonna be on our way. I quietly stopped near the industrial zone and started waiting for the morning. I've been playing these 100 days not for too long, but I can already say that this survival is 100% different from the others. Instead of building an ordinary house somewhere underground, underwater, or in some plains, we live in a train, using it as transport and storing all of our things in it. So this is quite unusual. I've never had a single survival where a train was my home, which makes this survival truly exclusive. On the next day, the only place that I didn't loot was the port. It was a great place because I found a lot of resources there. There was even a huge monster, but I decided to go around it because I was still saving some ammo. After looting the port, I returned to the train and decided to move on. There were no barriers, so I drove into the tunnel. Let's get out of here! On the next day, I finally got out of the long tunnel. There was again a swamp around me, but in a sort of different format. There were massive trees around me, and even sometimes there were these houses, next to which I stopped and looted. The road to the next destination was very long. On day 34 and 35, I was on the road passing very beautiful places, mountains, rivers, and forests. But by the morning of day 36, I finally reached a very interesting location. It turns out that this is it, the very first wonder of the world that I saw in the survival. It was the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is a metal structure in the center of Paris, named after the chief designer Gustav Eiffel. It was built in 1989, and it is 300 meters tall. And in this survival, my favorite builders made this schematic variant. Well, or you can call it an approximate copy. Throughout the survival, you and I will encounter various wonders of the world that we can explore. And first in line, we have the Eiffel Tower. Well friends, here I parked my train. I'm standing on the platform at the train station, and here we have the Eiffel Tower. Would you look at that? Okay, first of all, let's go around the station, see what's here. I really hope that we'll be able to find a lot of good loot here, because we have a lot of problems with ammo and food. By the way, despite the fact that we've already survived here for 36 days, there are still problems with food. In addition to the tower, there was also a small village. But first of all, I decided to go to the Eiffel Tower. The closer I got, the bigger it seemed to be. And it was all overgrown. I think it's because of the apocalypse. Downstairs, I was greeted by a couple of monsters that I dealt with quickly and began to climb the stairs to the top. At some moments, it was even quite dangerous. Okay, honestly, this is a little scary. Given that the stairs are hanging, uh, hanging in the air, I almost fell. Going higher, there was a lot of barbed wire. A few boxes of cool resources and from here there was just an awesome view of the entire nearby area. In addition, there was some note that I decided to read. Day 50. I don't know how to entertain myself on this tower. It's the only place where it is safe. It's good that I put hay bales at the bottom and can safely jump off as it softens the fall. But sometimes you must go down the stairs and yes, there is a blockade at the top so I can't climb up and the tower there slowly leans to the side. Let's hope that it doesn't completely break off. Look, it really is a little tilted. That's 
interesting. Well, okay guys, this is a real wonder of the world, and we can literally visit it in our survival. Wait, so what- you're telling me he jumped from he- No guys, I'm afraid of heights, what are you- I'm not jumping, no! Let's go! Wow! Oh my god! And just three seconds later, it dawned on me that it was very risky. And this survival series could have ended right here. Why did I jump now? I should have done it when I had full HP. At least I had some armor on. Oh my god. Why did I do that? That was so random. After that, I decided to keep exploring this area. We visited the Eiffel Tower, ticked the box, and now I'm gonna keep going. I don't really want to stay here for one more day, so I'll loot everything and leave right away. Look at that monster! Alright, cool. Now that's what I like to see. A fire extinguisher right in the air. This is Minecraft. I mean, this is actually a very interesting area. Because we just left the swamp and we can finally see real greenery. Vegetation. I don't even know how long this will last though. Ooh, potatoes. Alright, I'm gonna eat them right now. In the shed, I actually found a lot of food. And the good news was that we still have a small village ahead. It was in it that I hoped to find the resources that I lack. The resource problem in this survival is really different from all my previous ones. In these houses I found food, ammo, iron, water, and so on, and it was very helpful. Even though night was already coming and more monsters appeared, I looted all the houses and was especially glad I looted the last one, because there I found a very interesting thing. <gasps> An enchanting table, guys! An enchanting table, let's go! I didn't even want to go loot this house, but look at this! This is definitely the coolest thing I found in this survival. And look, my armor is almost broken, so let's run to the train and get out of here as soon as possible. Because as you can see, monsters are already waiting for me! Oh my god, oh, oh, alright, 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 alright. When I finally dealt with the monsters, I kept going to the train, and as soon as I reached it, I turned on the engine and skedaddled from here right away, on my way to explore this beautiful world world ahead of me. On the morning of day 37, one day on the road and I was already leaving a new tunnel when a desert appeared right in front of me. The feeling of the wild west didn't leave me until I saw the pyramids. One of the wonders of the world is the Egyptian pyramids right in our survival. Honestly, for a while I even forgot that we were in an infected apocalypse. It's cool that there are always a huge number of builds that make our survival as interesting as possible. First the Eiffel Tower, then this. Very cool. A lot of interesting things on this map. I really love to to travel by train and take a look at all these creations. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna make myself some armor because as you can see, we have a small problem. So first of all, I made myself an iron chest plate as well as a helmet. In addition to this, I disenchanted all the things and went closer to the pyramids. It turned out that you can even go inside them. I started with a smaller pyramid. A long descent down and oh, we're in a maze. There are some tunnels here and I definitely got that this is a lab. After surviving a hundred days in a maze, I don't want to go back to them at all. I'm too tired of it. About five minutes in, I understood the principle by which I can go through this labyrinth. Okay guys, I have a tactic. What happens if I only walk on cracked bricks? Well, that should have been proven, folks. Okay, look how fast I went through this maze. Oh my god, what is that? So we have a center and three levers. This is some kind of dungeon? I'm actually in an infected apocalypse. And here are some pyramids, what? Okay guys, this is some real contrast. Be sure to write in the comments and like the video. By activating all three levers through the traps, I was finally able to activate the shulker box that appeared right in the middle of the room. Wow, a fiery axe allows you to get coal when cutting wood, an explorer's hat, and donuts of some sort. Guys, well, I'm Indiana Jones, the Tomb Raider. On day 39, I decided to go to the huge ancient pyramid. First of all, as you can see, the stairs were a lot larger. As I went downstairs, I saw signs on which some messages were written in the form of poems. A wanderer who came from a distant land, test your courage. Past the trials, for evil will be punished by the glory of the cherished. The entrance will be open very noticeable. The hidden treasure of that wanderer was waiting, but what was inside guarding it? Past three trials, the wall will disappear on the way. Oh man, guys, are these my builders? Did they write this? Not bad. Okay, three trials, as I understand, three options, and if we pass them, we can go through here. Solve the riddle, recreate the answer, open the passage, reveal the secrets. Well, uh, that's the option I like the most. Let's go here. Apparently, the first trial is about some questions that we need to answer. Okay, I ended up in a room. 
what kind of monster appeared on the way of quietly resting tourists? Haggy Waggy, Crab Monster, and Pita Man? Wait, 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 look, that's my vacation photo. Obviously, it's the crab monster, <laughs> and it worked. What was the Lego set bought in Malaysia? Ah, uh, ah, uh, I get it. My team prepared questions for me about myself. So, well, I know it's a bonsai tree. Naturally, this is true. I answered all these questions quite easily because they were all about my life and my last journey. Okay, guys, it's over. Nice. Here's a chest that has a living scythe, three diamonds, a blaze rod and a golden crisp scarab. Can I eat it? Oh, oh, okay. Okay, there's a button here. Let's press it. It was time for the second trial. It was a parkour test. At first, there was no parkour and I calmly got there and pressed the button. But on the way back, I really needed to do some real parkour. Well, someone wasn't lucky. Luckily, I'm pretty good at parkour, so I passed the trial with flying colors. The third trial. They are very fond of labyrinths in these pyramids. It was another labyrinth, only 35 times larger and with all sorts of traps that constantly shoot at you with arrows, then fire, then poison. It is simply impossible to complete this labyrinth without falling for a single trap. This labyrinth is simply bullying me. It's a mockery of semen. Just how many times was I shot by poison? As a result, I went to do some parkour over the lava and there it is. A treasure trove where I was able to press the final lever as well as take some really interesting resources. The final trial. Oh look, the passage opened. What awaits us here? It's a huge, huge pyramid. How did my team do it? I have no clue. What's that? Is that a boss? Oh my God, it's a boss. Oh my God, he's tossing me up so high. I have one and a half HP! I have one and a half HP! Oh my god, one and a half HP! He's still spawning his... Uh... Come on, Zeman, you got this! One and a half HP! Nice! Guys, it was so difficult to fight the boss when you have one and a half HP. I don't know how I survived, but it happened and we're moving on. Oh my god, friends, as I understand it, this is a tomb. Look, diamond blocks, iron block, iron slabs, and gold blocks. Awesome! Blessing of Tefnut. I don't know what that is. Let's take it. And a tamed eagle. Cool. This is a special hoe because all the crop grows much faster on the soil that it plowed. And in our case, since we constantly move bases, we really need it. As well as a tamed eagle, which is gonna be a very cute and cool pet. After exploring the Egyptian pyramids, I discovered a lot of new things and decided to keep going. There was a difficult and long road ahead. Our adventure continued. Can you imagine how much we've already traveled and how many locations are still ahead of us? I spent the entire 41st day on the road. There was only a desert and canyons all around. And on the 42nd day, I finally made it to the second large scale location in this survival, the Barren Sands. The Barren Sands is a desert location with a high level of difficulty because the so-called Baron rules this location and his people control everything around. And as you can understand, they of course will not be friendly. The location is huge and in the next few days, we'll be able to explore it. First of all, my train reached some small, possibly destroyed station. I decided to stop there and see what could be inside. Okay guys, what kind of building do we have here? Where did I even end up? Oh my god, who is that? What is HP! What is HP! Oh my god, I need to go hide. At the time, I didn't even realize what had happened. Oh my god, who are you guys? So, okay, let's try to go inside. Oh, come on! Half HP! Half HP! Half HP! Oh my god! These guys are definitely not infected. Half a heart! Every bullet seems to be the last. Okay, I see another one. But what scared me the most was that the artificial intelligence of these mobs was upgraded. As if my team had made it even smarter. On the first floor, I even managed to loot a couple of boxes with very good loot. For example, ammo for my gun. Where? Where are they shooting at me from? For the rest of the evening, I fought them and as a result, I was barely able to cope with them. The day was coming to an end and I decided to rest and tomorrow try to figure out where I had gone. Morning. I wanted to devote the next few days to building my base. I decided to start on the second floor of this building. Then I got sand for my awesome panoramic view. After I made the window, I decided to make a small warehouse as well. We're going to spend a lot of time in this location, so I think a warehouse would be a great idea. On day 44, I made another window and also closed a couple of holes. I didn't need the whole second floor, so I separated it with a kind of fence. I also made a few doors and surrounded it all with barbed wire. There's definitely going to be a problem with food in this desert, so on 
day 46 on the roof, I decided to make my own farms. Somehow right outside my window was a huge number of massive mutants. It was weird. I didn't even get why they were spawning near my new house. I needed to do something about it. Ah, the intro is over. Okay, mutants, let's try to shoot them from the second floor. Oh, what was that, huh? Are they trying to piss me off? I was trying to go mine and set up my new house, but I was attacked by these mutants, and at some point they left me at half HP. Oh, no, 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 half HP, half HP. No, 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 okay, medkit, medkit. Come on, the episode just started, and the craziness is already happening. Why can't they just live peacefully? Let's go, we did it. As it turned out later, this happened because of my build. The first thing to do was to harvest wheat and make myself some food. Go to the caves and get resources. Then furnish my base a little. Wait a minute! One of them dropped me a laser rifle? That's crazy! It would be better if they didn't come though. But everything has its pros and cons. Also, on this day, I decided to make myself a ladder to my farm so that it'd be easier to reach them. And since the wheat was ready, I just harvested it. The harvest turned out to be pretty good, guys. Two stacks of wheat and three stacks of seeds! Now I knew for sure that we wouldn't starve for a few days. Good morning, friends. It's the next day. Today, we begin our journey to the military base. The more we survive, the more careful I needed to be. In addition to the mutants, we are also threatened by the bandits who can kill me with two shots. So I had to be super careful. Okay, I'm just gonna go in carefully and loot. Oh, a chest. Some kind of horn. Uh, can I blow into it? Da, 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 da. <laughs> taste my fire axe. Okay, just not to waste my ammo. Oh my, they're pretty strong. It's good that this base wasn't under the bandit's guard. Otherwise, I'd be done for. Let me remind you that this whole location is controlled by the Baron, who's the lead of the bandits. Actually, my primary task is to find them. But well, first of all, I had to loot the military base. Wow, look how much barbed wire there is. We surely need all of it. Okay, we can cover our whole base with it. For the rest of day 48, I was gathering barbed wire. But on day 49, I decided to go into a cave because I hadn't been in one of those for a while. In fact, we're running out of resources. Golden Rush, let's go! It's been a while since I went into a cave to mine resources. I found a lot of cool stuff. Wow, I dug up a whole tunnel here. Look at how much stuff there is. Coal, lapis, iron, awesome! I looked at my base after I came back and I want to ask you a question. What do you see? I see a massive pile of rubble. It's time to make this a real Zeman base. First of all, on day 50, I decided to do the first floor and make a pool. Don't ask why, I don't know. The idea came to my mind, so I made it. It turned out pretty cool though. On day 51, I surrounded the whole building with barbed wire so that mutants wouldn't get me. And also, I fixed the walls so that there were no holes in them. Look, we even have a panoramic view to the wasteland. It's been a few days and I still haven't started exploring the area and it scared me a little bit. But we can't forget that the most important thing is the survival, because if the infection catches up with us, then nothing will save us. So today, I I decided to go exploring. My primary task, of course, was to find the Baron. Perhaps it is through him we can go further. But first, we need to loot a couple locations. I decided to go to that huge tower I saw when I first entered the location. And there I saw a bunch of flying monsters. Oh, how much HP does he have? Okay, where are we going, guys? Let's look around and be very careful. I guess there are a lot of various infected creatures here. This is the tower I found. I haven't been inside it yet, but I want to see what's in there. I'm kind of frightened, to be honest. After dealing with a couple of infected, I began to look for the entrance to this tower. It wasn't there, but then I took a closer look, and then I found some kind of bunker entrance. It turned out to be a way that allows you to get inside. There, of course, the infected were also waiting for me. Uh, okay, carefully. Okay, we're inside. Since I've killed so many monsters so far, the loot must be pretty good here. As I climbed up the ruined stairs, there, of course, I saw a bunch of infected. The coolest thing I could find was a rifle with ammo, some strange ring, a globe that I of course took. It'll fit beautifully into our interior. We'll take the globe and place it somewhere in my home. I really love globes. But when I broke it, I only got the beacon, and I of course was pretty upset. As I got out of the tower, I noticed that the sun was going down. The last thing I decided to do was go into some wide building and gather the TNT there. The map was really big, and we needed to explore it all as soon as possible. But for now, we're going home. The line of events. The first thing that triggers various events randomly in this survival. In the last episode, for example, I was attacked by zombies, and I barely dealt with them. But in this episode, Episode, the event that happened will shock you. On day 53, it happened for the first time. Good morning, guys. Look what I found in the lower left corner of my screen. The icon of the event. I wonder what it might mean. 
Okay, okay, I hope it's nothing serious. If you don't know where to go, then go on the railroad. It has to end somewhere sooner or later. I can already see something on the horizon. And what is that? At the time, I couldn't even imagine what kind of building it was, and most importantly, who was the owner. I think you already figured that out. If I had a scope, I would take a closer look at everything inside. Ugh, scarecrow! Pretty scary. Ah! Wait, it seems they won't shoot at me. G good evening, boys. Hello? What am I even doing here? They even have a welcome carpet. How cute. It's pretty messy in here, guys. A lot of garbage. Where are we? Oh my gosh! Who is that? I decided to find out. Is he the guy that I'm looking for? Greetings. I'm the Baron. The most dangerous man in this wasteland. I control everything here and I hear every step. You're under my control. But I want to give you a chance to survive. If you do my job, then we're even. Because my people are pretty dumb. And you're kind of smart. Once there were four golden rings lost in this wasteland. Very valuable rings. They have a power within them. Find them for me and I'll grant you freedom. Okay guys, uh, saying the truth, I'm a bit shocked. It turns out that this is the base of the Baron. Could you imagine? It was hard not to react, but we found a clue in this plot. It's the most important thing. I decided to take a look around the mansion that he lives in. There's even a helipad here. Awesome! Okay, that's cool. I would love to have a base like this. Okay, the rings. Uh, let's look for them. On day 54, I decided to make myself a sugarcane farm to make bookshelves in the future and enchant everything as much as possible. It turned out to be pretty cool. Okay, guys, it looks just amazing. Awesome, look at that. Now we'll get sugarcane to make ourselves bookshelves to enchant our things as best we can. I'm a good boy. Who's a good boy? I'm a good boy. But day 55 was much less of a fairy tale. On that day, a lot of infected beacons spawned. It was very scary because I was 100% sure that the infection was still very far away. It should grow wave by wave, not chaotically. I didn't have any clue what is happening. It's probably an increase of difficulty of my survival. Look, oh my, where did that come from? Where did this thing come from? How can an infected beacon be already here? Look, what kind of horror is this? We urgently need to dig it all up with a shovel. Ah, I can't mine with a shovel. Is it actually possible? Look, it went a few blocks down. Oh my God, this is not normal. What the? There was no answer, but I thought they should be treated like weeds. And I have TNT exactly for this case. No, guys, I'm so glad that I picked it up. Well, okay, I think that's okay. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Woo! You guys can now see for the first time in your life how much the infected zone is grown into the ground. And not only on the surface. It looks just like this. We need more TNT because, well, it's pretty tough. So I spent almost all the TNT for this area. I hope it was worth it. I'll finish the rest with my pickaxe. On day 56, the first thing I decided to do was to harvest the weed, because the bread goes away very quickly in the survival. In the second part of the day, I decided to go to the nearby territories, and the first thing I came across were these solitary ruins, but they were far from ordinary. Some kind of bunker right in this building. Let's see what do we have in here. By the way, it's not far from our base. First of all, let's see what we have in the house itself. I didn't find anything especially useful in the house. In any case, I am more interested in this bunker. Let's open it up and see what's inside. So it's a little scary in there, but worth trying. Okay, it's a small room. Uh, uh no, no way. It's a big room. I really hope there won't be any monsters down there. Ooh, a golden crown, look. Wait, can I put it on? Oh, nice. For some reason, it doesn't look that golden, but it suits my style anyway. Oh, wow, where are we? All this is under that small shack. I was really surprised by the size of this huge multi-story bunker under just some small ruins. When I reached the dead end, I found a very interesting note. There's a note here, let's read it. As the days went by, their voices were everywhere. They were everywhere. The only thing that calmed me down was a toy given to me on the day we met. I wish I had time to say goodbye to her. Wherever you are now, 7658 is the password for... The note ends there. I wonder what those numbers mean. Perhaps they'll be useful to the plot. I don't know yet. I got out of the bunker by the time it was night and decided to go home. Today, I went out early in the morning to have time to explore everything. As you can see, we already have infected areas appearing here. It's very strange, so we really need to hurry up. Ooh, some coal. Let's take it. First of all, there are these beacons here again. Mind some coal between the fights? So look, another one, another beacon. What? What is that? What kind of infected is that? He's running at me. Oh, no, 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 no. Easy, 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 easy. W wait, wait, no, run. Get away from me, get away from me. Okay, I just gotta run. I don't know how I just survived, guys. What if we try to shoot him from here? I mean, we can try, but I think it's useless. He has a lot of... Did I just kill him? Did I just kill him? 
Perhaps I was just lucky, but in any case, there is no monster anymore, and we can further explore the ruins that I have left unlooted. I found quite a lot of good loot, but there was no golden ring here. In any case, there are not so many resources here anyway. Day 58 was hot, because I found this forgotten tanker, but the tanker wasn't deserted at all, it was inhabited by the bandits. So guys, we have these banditos here, I've already figured that out. I wonder if they'll shoot at me, because I'm still doing the Baron's tasks. Oh, oh, no, 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 they will shoot, they will shoot, easy, easy, easy. In fact, the bandits are more difficult than all the other mobs because they have a long range attack and a very quick one. A couple of hits and survival can end instantly. Unlike with these guys, when fighting the infected, you still have some time to heal. Look, they have a whole base here. I'm already lost in this huge tanker. Damn. Okay, here we have the living quarters. Ow, ow, easy, easy, no, no, no. Okay, let's go higher carefully. The main thing is to climb higher. Okay, stop. Ow, 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 ow. One and a half HP. What's that? That's it, guys, we did it. I thought that was it, the end, but... So, there's a note here. I think there should be some useful information there. There's nothing here? Excuse me? What do you mean, nothing? But after wandering around the ship a little more, I was still able to find the golden ring, and I had to find two more. Day 59, and today, our event got to the arrow. I was already waiting for it to happen. On the same day, something strange began. At one moment, people just started coming to me, and more than that, they were my builders. I have no clue how they did it. The map changes the conditions of the game and opens up the world to the network. And since all my builders are connected to my network, then in theory they can come in. But why exactly they joined, I really don't know. Hi Zeman, there you are. What do you think would make the survival more difficult? What? What's that? Why do I have four extra people in a single world? How is that even possible? Even then, I quickly realized they didn't come for no reason. And most likely, they want to make my survival way more difficult. Vlad, don't be afraid. It's us, your friends. Guys, honestly, knowing my builders, there's something shady going on here. They came to interfere with my survival, and 100% this is against some sort of challenge. But here's the question. They must know where my house is because they must have watched the previous episode like you. So most likely, they will come here. So I decided to make a small trap just in case. They probably spawned somewhere nearby, and we're already on the way to my base. Okay, this is how we're gonna place the redstone, and here we have to think about how we can close this, because it's not really visible, but you can still suspect something. After placing a small pile of sand, I went to the shelter. I can see them! <laughs> Okay, I'm shifting so my name tag is not visible. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Yes, I got them. Get out of here. Leave, leave right now. My plan worked. I drove them away from my base, but they managed to escape and may come back. Or rather, they will come back. Because what else are they going to do on my map? Day 60. Oh, well, it didn't end here. Yesterday, I managed to take out two of them, and there are still two of them left. My day started with me just picking up some wheat. Okay, I see one. Huh? What? Are you nuts? Look what he's doing! Okay, another one is left. We'll catch up with him. No, 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 that's a bad idea! No! Look, he's running away! Whoa, that's it! The event is gone, and the icon is gone as well! Oh my god, I certainly couldn't expect my team to be able to do such events, wow. Somehow they turned on a server that allows them to connect. And look, we now have waterfalls in my pool, that's cool. Day 61. From now on, I decided to go back to my tasks, because I had to find the rings in the first place. But there are still no rings, which can just put us in a deadlock, so I went on a journey today. So guys, I'm already seeing something. By the way, not far from the tanker. Ooh, there's an infected area. I think I can find some skulk there. So, I see the bandits, as usual. After quickly dealing with the bandits, I began to explore what we can find in the boxes. First of all, of course, it's important to find some loot. As I understand it, this is again some kind of bandit base or some excavations they're doing here. I don't really know, but the location looks very atmospheric. Mask of the ghost tree! Oh well, let's try to put it on. Honestly, I can't see anything. What is this? In fact, I don't have anything else but a bulletproof vest. It's sad. Then I saw a cave. Decided to go down and saw a bunch of infected people, and then a tent with an interesting note. The boss sent us to explore this cave, but we didn't know that in addition to spiders and bats, there would be these creatures. I lost two fighters, and two more went to the noise, but never returned. It seems to be my last entry. Wow. This of course is all very scary, but to be honest, there is little that can scare me anymore. Wow, where did we end up? Look how beautiful this is. The sun was sinking lower and lower. I was trying to find something interesting. And at last I decided to check out the warehouse. After opening all the boxes, I found the ring in one of the last chests, which I was very happy about. Yes, ring! 
Look, great, let's go. Okay, we have three. We need to find one more. And honestly, it's pretty hard to believe, but in the next building, I found the last ring. And now we can go and quickly give the rings to the Baron. Day 62. And at that point, I never assumed what a dangerous situation I was in. And the infection had come very close, but I had no idea about that. I was on my way to the Baron's base, and in the afternoon, everything was shrouded in darkness. Haha, <laughs> what a fool. Do you really think I'm going to let you go? Give me the rings and say goodbye to your life? What? Oh no, no, what? Uh, what? No, so this is what the Baron is like? Come on! It turned out to be a huge trap. But first of all, there are still some upsides. There is no more Baron on this map and the rings are still with me. So we can now get out of this location somewhere really far away. Okay guys, the most important thing is that we can now finally leave this place. I'm quickly returning to my base, packing all of my stuff and setting off. When I climbed onto the roof, it became clear that the situation is really bad and we have to leave right now. Okay, I just want to come close and see what's out there. Not sure if it's a good idea, but, but it's worth a try. Are you curious? I'm also curious. Okay, I feel like if I leave this place today, we're going to be completely surrounded and I'm going to have no options to escape. There's lightning strikes everywhere. Oh my god, what? Look! No way! They seem to be spawning someone! Okay, run, run, run! Another beacon just appeared! In about five minutes, I moved all of my stuff from the base to the train and was ready to go. So, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go! Okay, guys, it was a cool location, but we're gonna see just as many cool ones. So, let's get out of here. And we're finally riding the train again after 18 minutes of the video. What a relief! On day 63, I drove through a huge number of incredible locations and rushed further into the horizon. After spending another 64 day on the road and on day 65 I finally arrived at a new location and it was no less interesting than the previous one. The secret jungle or it can be called some forgotten locations in the mountains. I don't know but there were a huge number of ruins around and even then I didn't understand where I had gone and what I had found. Guys look at where we are right now. Everything is so green. After the wasteland it's just a sight to see. There's ruins all around and also a tower. Now let's see what's in it. Finally I could relax for a bit and explore this location quite calmly. But I wasn't going to stay here for a long time because the infection is about to catch up with us anyway. We need to get as far away from it as possible. Okay, a chest. Let the chest have some good loot inside. Oh, look, a revolver and a book with a quill. Day 41, yesterday I came across these ruins. After looking around for a while, I was stunned. This is the ancient city of Machu Picchu. It was getting dark and I decided to spend the night in this tower. During the night, I woke up to the rumble of some rocks, after which I heard very loud footsteps. Steps. Kind of like interesting discoveries and kind of scary. Awesome! It turns out to be an ancient city of Machu Picchu. Wow, guys, we found another wonder of the world. Then unexpectedly under the tower, I met my new friends. They were mummies. And here we have some ruins too, and we need to explore them all, because we might find some cool magical loot. As for me, this is a very cool location. No trace of other people other than the ruins, and of course my train. And what is your favorite location from this survival? Tell me in the comments below. Oh, a pathway. Let's follow it. I think there will be some of the biggest ruins I've ever seen in Minecraft. And I have a problem with food. Hopefully there will be some. For quite a long time in the evening, I was looting and walking around these ruins. Sometimes it seemed to me that these were some kind of labyrinths. But in fact, they were just buildings without roofs. I also saw the guards of the ruins who guarded the local areas and were not happy to see me. And whoa, 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 whoa. So here we have another chest. Dusty bone and brown dye. Excellent. Friends, here of course is very beautiful. I haven't found super incredible loot yet, but in the evening, I was finally able to find something interesting. Yo, what? What is that? I want to go down there. Who are you? Oh, it's armor. Wait a minute. What do I look like, guys? Do I look like a toad? There was also a second chest in which I found a levitation ring and a lily pad glider. So, guys, what if we try to use a lily pad glider here? I'm just curious. Okay, take off and let's go. Awesome. I heard of the mod that allows you to fly a thing like this, but I didn't know that it looks so cool. This is such a cool thing. Awesome. At this point, the day was coming to an end and I had to find shelter for the night.
Where do you think I could hide? Of course, just in a mountain. I got some wood like on the first day and made myself a crafting table so I could make some bread. Okay, yeah, we have guests again. I managed to loot some more ruins, which I was incredibly happy about. Also this beautiful ravine, which also had a chest. I also looted some more. And at this point, this day was coming to an end. And I decided to leave this location and keep going. On day 67, I kept driving and finally got into the winter biome. This is the first time we're seeing a biome like this in this survival. On day 68, I finally arrived in a huge location and I can tell you right away that this will be the biggest place in all of the survival. The location is called the Taiga. Noticing the ruins near the railway, I decided to stop and loot them and maybe even make my base there. Oh friends, it's honestly a bit cold here. I left my train here because otherwise it would have rolled down there and it's still um, the locomotive is on a flat surface. Okay guys, the new location is huge, much bigger than the location with the Baron. There's a lot to explore here. Let's start by getting a little bit of loot and see what's here. Already, in fact, the location will mainly be explored in the last fourth episode. Ooh, the scorpion, right in time, great. Let's see, maybe there's something else besides this building. The second floor, wow. Some kind of uniform? So, I have some great armor, so I don't need that uniform at all. Actually, not a bad place for a new base. Look, there are even some huge mountains there. Okay, tell me in the comments what you think about this place. I like it. There's even a path there. Let's go for a walk and see where it leads. Personally, I love the winter atmosphere, and this location was just warming my heart. Even I can't imagine how much more there is to it. My builders really did a great job. So look, I found a bridge. It's not a railroad bridge. Obviously, it's just a pedestrian or most likely for cars, I guess. And from here, there is a fairly good view. Look, there is our train. There is also some building there. In fact, there are a lot of these kinds of bridges. The location itself is very huge. Oh, there's something there. We'll definitely check this all out. A blizzard has come and along with it, several factors that have appeared that complicated my survival. The first and foremost is temperature. Now I will have to constantly warm up near any block that emit light. If this is not done, then I will freeze to death and our survival will end in a second. And to prevent this, I first of all made a fire. I had no idea my team wrote another mod that makes me freeze to death if I don't stand next to something warm. Look, from here I can see their legs. Okay, it's better not to leave this place. But just a minute later, a couple of infected were still able to get into my ruins. Yeah, I, come on, another one! I think I forgot to close something. Somehow they're getting through. Having closed all the holes through which the monsters could pass, I realized that I I need to make some kind of room. Firstly, it's gonna protect me from monsters, and secondly, for better heating. Because my team said that indoors heat is better, which means we can warm up faster. Well, I would like to add that our location is simply huge. I left the train on some old bridge, and because of the snowfall and the whole story with heat and cold, I couldn't explore the area normally. So I don't even know where I should go. And let me remind you that our main task is to get to the so-called oasis, where there will be no infection that is constantly bothering us, from which we have to run away from location to location and where you can build a new life and most importantly survive these 100 days. Now we need to get some wood and immediately it's written in chat you are cold you need to warm up. Here it is by the way and about that in general where in the world are we? Monsters are running at me again look looks like some kind of skeleton. On the same day I decided to collect some wood so I could smelt it in the furnace to make my room warm but there was a problem my fire axe mined coal from the tree. Uh there's a small problem I have this flaming axe right here and when I break a tree coal falls out and what do you think I should do about that? Finally, in the evening, having obtained a tree with a normal iron axe, I began to build my base. I decided to choose the second floor and began to make it. The most important condition is that there are no holes. Then the heat will be well preserved. Having made the ceiling, it was already going dark. Look, I made a ceiling like this, completely closed up all the holes and even put a door like this. By the way, it's still dark outside. But what happens next will completely shock you. Suddenly, while I was furnishing my home, the message you are infected appeared on my screen. As it turned out later, this text will completely change our survival. Nearby there is a camp of scientists. Perhaps you can find information about the infection. Coordinates 6980 and 6000. What does that mean? I mean, am I infected? What kind of joke is this? I don't even know what to do right now. So, for starters, I wanted to actually make a wall here. Let's actually finally build it. At that moment, I didn't know at all if this was some kind of plot story that was 100% supposed to happen, or if it was some kind of terrible random event. It was also frightening that the event bar in the lower left corner of the screen, which was throughout all three episodes, simply disappeared. I decided to wait until morning and go to these coordinates. Day 70. And first of all, I decided to run to my train, to take some food for myself and see if I have leather armor. Because 
because thanks to it, I can stay in the cold for longer. So, but there's good news. First, I had a leather chest plate, and second, I took some food. I like to eat. I already forgot about all my tasks, and most importantly, I wanted to run to those very coordinates in order to find what kind of infection I had. But before that, I ran into some monsters and some other interesting NPCs. I don't know what kind of flying thing appeared here. It doesn't really look like SpongeBob, and she doesn't really look like anything else either. Come on, uh... Well, it wasn't as hard as I thought. Time to reload our revolver and show these monsters who's in charge! So I came across a checkpoint where there were some people in armor and with guns. And I thought that maybe there were some dialogues with them. So I decided to come up and talk. Stop. Further passage is closed. You look infected. But then how do I move on? You can't. Thank you. You just saved me. In addition to everything, I realized that it was exactly where I needed to be. Across this railway where there were barriers through which I couldn't get through. It was necessary to somehow get rid of the infection in order to move on. Okay, there are some more soldiers here. Okay, commandant. Hello, survivor. What are you doing here? We are investigating the infection. Look, you look like a good fighter and we need help. Two of our soldiers are missing. Their mission was to explore a city inhabited by a lone mutant. It would be a great opportunity to take his blood to develop an antidote. But our guys never returned and contact with them is lost. We need to find out what happened to them. Nothing more is required from you. Another mission? Why not? Maybe this will help me somehow. Taking another mission, I realized that there were multiple messages saying that I need to warm up and I thought that right now I need to make a furnace and cook something in it since it was already too late to go back. You are very cold. You need to warm up right now. Otherwise you will die. Okay, this is no longer funny. Right now with a flaming axe I can get cold like this and I think that this will be enough to place a few torches. Although I don't know if this will help us or not but I really have to make torches and place them around the perimeter of this entire room. Having closed up all the holes, mined some cobblestone and made a furnace, I finally began to warm up and this meant that we would definitely survive this night. Morning of the 71st day, the blizzard never ended. There were infected monsters all around, and our goal was to reach the coordinates where there might be something that could help us. The virus is progressing, you're in worse shape. I don't understand, fatigue appeared? What? As you may have noticed, now I have a permanent fatigue effect, due to which I now break all blocks for a very long time. I know that the virus will progress further, but one thing is clear. If we do not find some kind of antidote tomorrow, my survival may end. If you look closely, there is some kind of infected. Look, and not even one, there's two of them. Okay, I feel like the further we go on this map, the worse and worse things get. And also, this is where the railway ends. So, as I understand it, we need to remove the infection, and then we can probably leave this location. When that will be, I don't know. Given that I'm tired right now and I don't know what effects will appear next, it's getting a little scary. And now I finally reached those coordinates. Behind the fence, I saw some kind of weird monster and decided to go around and find another entrance, since I didn't really want to fight with it. So I'm gonna carefully explore everything so that no one will jump on me. When I reached the nearest building, I began opening the chest and found some quite useful loot there. I think everything that gives light should also help us warm up a little bit. Let's warm up a bit here and move on. The blocks of course now broke for a very long time. There was nothing I can do about it. When I got into the main building, I saw a bunch of infected with whom I dealt really quickly. And I also found a very interesting chest with a note in it. Wait, if I drink milk, will the effect disappear? Oh! It worked! Okay, book and quill. Day 20. Today we saw an old man who lives in a house near the lake. We decided to interrogate him. It turned out that he was a doctor of several sciences. For the sake of the experiment, they gave him a daily work of one scientist. He completed it in an hour. I think the book here is for a reason. It'll probably help us find the same person who can just help us with the infection. My team really buffed the plot in the survival. Before, I just survived. But now, a whole plot of some kind suddenly appears. When I looted the entire location, I decided to return home already and I wanted to avoid encounters with huge and very powerful monsters. So the day was coming to an end. Day 72. The blizzard is completely over. Visibility has improved significantly. And now I will freeze much slower. Good morning, friends. Look, it all cleared up. I want to say that I only have six leather right now, so I think I'll make myself a new helmet. Okay, done. I think that our new task is gonna go look for some leather, because the more leather armor we have, the less the cold affects us, which is very important in the current conditions. Let's go. I walked around the surroundings for a long time, but somewhere in the middle of the day, I found an interesting dungeon. It was a small power plant, and of course, they were infected. I came across some kind of power plant, and I already see the infected here. Oh my god, boys, where are you running? 
happening? Okay, I don't know how many of you are here. Oh, too many, too many. Okay, never mind, guys. Wow. When I dealt with all the other infected, I began to loot the location. Of course, I didn't find any leather here, but there was a lot of interesting loot. When I finally finished looting, I decided to return home. And then suddenly, on the 73rd day, something happened that I could not expect. The infected zone was already on its way. I already forgot what it looks like, and now it reminds me of itself again. For those who have not watched the previous episode, I will tell you. But for those who have forgotten, I will remind you. For the whole survival, we're running away from the infected zone. If it overtakes us, then there is practically no chance to survive. No! The beacons are starting to appear again. Oh, come on, no. We need to get out of here quickly. Right now, we need to pick up all of our stuff from our base. I don't know how I'll keep warm at night and how I will solve the problem that I'm infected. But definitely, we need to get out of here right now because tomorrow, everything will be infected. I decided to get out of my base, take all my things and put them on the train and keep going. But the problem was that I could not move further because I had an infection and the barriers did not let me go further. All I could do was move my train about 20 blocks, but even that won me at least one day. At some point, I completely forgot that the infection was pursuing us. We need to find an antidote for the virus as soon as possible. I decided to go back to the science base and look around for some clues. I'll go down the road now and try to find something. In the evening, I still managed to find the house with the lake, which was mentioned in the note, and I hoped that they would be able to help me there. Oh, well, perhaps this is the same house of the scientist. Oh wait, come on, no! Look, the same old man, wait, that's actually him. Who are you? You look pale. You look like you ate some expired stew. What brought you here? I am infected. I heard that you're a good scientist. I need help. Antidote? Are you sick? Oh no. I, I can make any medicine. As a child, I cured a fly from a cold, but I need new equipment. Not far from here, there's a strange hole in the mountain with a large iron door. I heard they have tools that I need. And if you find me some new boots, I'll heal you. Bring them to me. Why should I bring him new boots? Are you serious? My life depends on fighting him new boots? What is- what is this behind me? Some weird monster. Perhaps this grandfather is crazy, but I don't know if I have any other options for my salvation. Day 74. Not far from the same house was some kind of suburb. I think it was a good idea to go there and look for something useful. If you remember, the guys at the checkpoint gave us a mission that some huge monster lives in some city. And yes, if you think that I didn't see him, no, no, of course I didn't. Keep watching to see what happened. Okay, okay, come on, come on, no, oh, oh my god, I see something, okay, I see something. We just need to run away. Wow, this is a real monster, come on. Thus, this whole situation led me to some kind of cave, in which there were even cameras. Going downstairs, I looked around, got some ore, and saw two survivors behind the barricade. Oh, wow, military jack. Survivor, help us. My partner was badly injured, and I cannot carry him alone. Are you the military from a checkpoint at the iron station? Yes, how did you know? I met your comrades, and the commandant gave me a mission to find out what happened to you. Phew, good to have you here. We got a sample of the city monster's blood. Give it to the commandant and report that we are alive. Be careful. We still don't understand the pattern of his behavior. He is very dangerous. Guys, it seems we are talking about the monster that I just saw on the street. When I received this information, I immediately began to get out of the cave and it was already evening. When I saw the monster again, I dealt with it pretty quickly and I decided to go back to the checkpoint to finish the mission. But it was already getting dark, so I decided to wait out the night in the nearest tent. Okay, there's a tent here near the science camp. By the way, I haven't been there yet, although- Oh, bonfire. Okay, let's warm up a bit. So, there's a chest here. Okay, that's it. I'll place the fire here, and all that remains is to wait for the morning. Morning of day 75. I was on my way to complete the mission and of course, receive a reward for it. There are no monsters around. It's just great news. Now I want to run away and finish this mission and then solve the problem with my infection. Surprisingly, so far everything has been more or less okay. I didn't have any new side effects and there weren't any signs either, but it was impossible to delay. So I decided to complete the mission and continue looking for what the old man needed. Look, there's a medic here. Thank you, survivor. Let me take part of the sample and leave the other half to you. I think you'll need it. Okay, ready. You can go. Alright guys, now let's get some kind of reward, I guess. We did a really cool job. Oh wow! Look what I got! Yes, it was a real new train car that looked just perfect. I immediately decided to put it on. Just look at this! Now we have a new wagon! Day 76. I kept looking for what the old man needed. So today, my task was to explore the entire location to the very end. And I even found something interesting. For example, an infected zone. Where as you remember from past episodes, Skull can be found. The first infected zone was not very difficult. Although there were new flying monsters, but I still took my Skull and proceeded with my journey. 
journey. I visited a second infected zone without any problems. The virus got worse and fatigue hit me again. The virus is progressing. You got worse. Again? Fatigue? Oh, come on. I found another skulk, a golden apple, and I should probably get the hell out of here ASAP. By the way, if there are still people who haven't seen the previous episode, skulk is a thing with which you can buy various resources for merchants. But there was one problem. Having gone around the whole map, I still haven't found the mysterious door. It was most likely a bunker, and we need to find everything there in order to recover from this infection. So the next day, I applied the following tactic. I decided to walk along the mountains, because I thought that the best place to hide the bunker is directly next to them. And you won't believe it, but it worked. I have two news. First, I found this entrance, and the second thing is... There's some flies flying around me. I don't know what it has to do with, but I'm guessing it's most likely the infection. I began to carefully descend into the bunker. In fact, I really explored the whole location, and this was definitely the place where we should find something to cure me. For example, what the old man asked to find. As usual, I was greeted by the infected, with which I dealt very quickly. And by the way, there's a lot of good loot here, which I happily took. Okay, I have to be careful and try to find some armor here. And it's good that there were no problems with armor in the bunker. I was quickly able to find myself good protection, and in addition, I found those specific boots. Look, I found the boots! These are probably the boots that I need to give to the old man. Okay, half the job is done. Let's keep exploring the bunker. For the rest of the day, I was fighting monsters and exploring this bunker. But the most important thing that I found is the very thing I needed in order to recover from the infection. OAC and regeneration potion. That's it, guys. I found everything I need. I'll just finish looking around the bunker and then I'll go back to the old man. Only on the morning of the next day I returned. Okay, old man. Who are you? W what Oh, you have the new boots and appliances. Come here, the medicine is ready. Goodbye. Antidote. Okay, great. Well, now I just need to drink it. I drank the medicine, and after a while, finally, it was written on the screen, and I was completely healthy. It was just great news. Woo! Victory! And finally, on day 78, I left this location on my favorite train and proceeded with my journey, because very soon we can get to the oasis. Day 79, I was on the road on my favorite train. The infection was over, and I moved moved through the endless winter mountains that felt like they never end. Most of our survival is over, but believe me, the interesting things are just happening. Day 80. Among the snow-capped mountains, I saw some kind of building, and it was just great news. Wow, guys, it looks like some kind of railroad depot. Okay, right now, the main thing is to stop carefully. Okay, wait, come on, come on. Okay, we're good. Apparently, I ended up in some new snowy location, and I think I'm not too welcome here, because some strange monsters immediately attacked me. Oh, oh, what is that? Is that a bear? Yeah, the monsters are uh, quite interesting here. There are some other insects crawling around. Look! Even even though it was daytime, there was still a huge number of infected in the location. So the first thing I decided to do was clear the building of the monsters. Okay, we've got a box here, some armor and a circuit board. I don't have any armor. Okay, I look pretty cool. After killing all the monsters, I was able to loot the entire depot. My intention was also drawn to a box that stood under the ceiling. Well, this ladder is definitely hanging here for a reason. Most likely there is some kind of parkour here. I decided to jump over the blocks to see if it was even possible possible to get there. And jump! Okay, great! So now the main thing is to carefully go there and not screw up. Box, you'll be mine! So here we have a note and two blocks of rough wool. I wonder if this is gonna be needed at all. It's so cold here. The scientists need food to cope with the virus. They're already close to the solution. I need to get to the research station as soon as possible. It was already going dark while I was reading the note, so I decided to get on the train and wait out that night. On the morning of day 81, I decided to keep going by rail. I was already pretty curious about what I'm gonna see later. For example, the top secret and mysterious laboratory Scott. It was our next stop. What is that? Is there a beacon up there? But the infection is behind me. Okay, this is a little weird. Maybe it's just a bug. But the strangeness didn't end there. When I went inside the building, I didn't see a single monster, even though ordinary buildings are teeming with them. It was strange, but I didn't have any choice because I got here in the evening. So I chose a room and decided to spend the night there. Yeah, I think I can sleep here. Carefully. Well, as they say, it's not forbidden to live luxuriously. 
In the morning, I heard some strange sounds. And you have no idea what was waiting for me on the other side of the door. A huge, incredibly large number of beacons. Come on, uh, I'm even scared to open the door. Okay, this seems like some sort of trap. Oh, look, look, infected! The monsters immediately attacked me, and I decided to return back to my so-called temporary shelter. There was nothing I can do. I was at a dead end here, and most likely, they're infected that can break blocks. So I didn't think of anything better than breaking the planks and just running. Come on, run, 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 run. Don't, don't look back, don't look back. Just run. Okay, close everything with planks. Fast, quick. Okay, done. But it was too early to relax, because as soon as I opened the doors, some infected monsters ran at me again. Okay, now I just need to finish off these beacons. Ooh, a box. Okay, no, a booklet. Okay, let's take it. Having looted most of the building, I already decided to return back to the train, because the monsters continued to spawn, and the ammo was, after all, not infinite. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Leave me alone. Ah! I don't understand how I survived, but today, it seems we're sleeping on the train again. During the night, I decided to read the note I found in this building. In this note, it was written about some kind of creature that lives in this location, and also that there is some kind of weather station on the opposite side of the scat behind the railway. So, on the morning of the 82nd day, I decided to go there right away. I don't know if I should go there, but there's no other options, so let's go. I walked for about half a day until some strange structure appeared on the horizon. Uh, there's a tower in front of us, and I don't see any that could prevent me from climbing it. A man said, a man did. Let's go. Look, I can already see the mutants from here. Oh, wow. Okay, anvil. All right, we'll take it. I quickly enchanted the pickaxe and went to loot the location. All of the most interesting, I found another note there, which said that all compasses in this location point to the same place. It was some kind of cave, and I wonder if it's somehow connected with that same monster. We'll check it out tomorrow. Why, there's so many of you. Oh, no, no, ah, half HP, half HP. No, oh. Oh my god, wow. When I returned to the train, I made myself a compass. And in the morning, I went to look for that cave. Day 84, I continued to ride through the snow-covered wasteland and suddenly noticed something on my left. Oh, there's something there. The compass is pointing in that direction. I feel like this is it, guys. As soon as I approached the cave, the boss bar appeared at the top of my screen. And I immediately knew that a battle was waiting for me here. What is that? It turned out to be the cave of the evil Yeti. And everything would be fine if not for one problem. I'm completely out of ammo. So, uh, well... It seems I have to kill him with my sword. Go, 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 go. Okay, eating a apple. Eating a apple. It was only thanks to the apple that I was able to survive and defeat this boss. We did it, guys. Here are the items. Look, they fell out of the monster. Oh, there's also a book there. Let's read it. Hello, Zeman. Congratulations. You were able to defeat the Yeti guard. The path to the next location is now open. We want to know that you're already very close to the oasis. Keep up the good work. Well, well, if so, then... I'll quickly get on the train and go. I didn't hesitate and immediately set off. I drove all night and finally, in the morning of the next day, I left the winter biome. I had not seen green grass for a very long time and was very pleased. Soon, we will find the oasis and I was already curious to know what it really is. The infected city is a location in which everything is covered with the infection. Beacons and monsters constantly spawn around and this is the location I have to visit today. Approaching the railway platform, I had no idea what trials lay ahead of me. Come on, where are we right now? What kind of place is this? How many beacons are there? So, there are no monsters here. Apparently, I was near a small railway depot. It was a good place to find some loot. Okay, box, golden apple, shoes, and a book. Nice. The railroad ahead is broken. We'll have to call the repairman. It turns out that the railway ahead was broken, and in order to go further, this railway needed to be repaired, and this requires special items. I don't like this place. Yeah, but okay, a depot. Okay, another chest. Ammo, biodiesel, diamond, first aid kits. Okay. Okay, it's getting dark. I think I should leave. Then I came on rather quickly. Okay, I'm gonna hide here. Right now, we'll put a fire and make some kebabs. Having barricaded all the walls from the monsters with blocks, I began to wait out the night. But then, I didn't even know that the more I was in this location, the more monsters would spawn around. The location looked very gloomy and dark. In a sense, there was no desire to walk on it at all. But I understood that this is our last frontier to the oasis, and we had to do it. Good morning. I hear someone. Again, the neighbors are doing repairs. Oh, come on. Oh, boxes. I didn't even notice them. Oh, a machine gun, ammo, and a book with a quill. So, the railroad track repairmen are due to arrive today. We need to meet them at the warehouse and start work. You may have to use the backup store in the dam. Okay, I have a feeling that the nearest place we're going to is the dam. But first, we need to get out of this place. Having dealt with the monsters that surrounded me, I went to loot the city. On the way, I saw a bunch of beacons that spawned so many infected. Look, there's a chest hanging up there. Parkour time! Let's
let's go! Let's go quickly! I beat the parkour fairly quickly, it was really easy. Okay, let's go! Okay, nice, so... Okay, we have the same armor I have, two first aid kits, ammo, and... A grappling hook? Oh, this is really cool. And of course, I decided to immediately test this thing. Okay, I just throw it. Oh, 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 okay, okay, be careful. Wow, you didn't even know, but I'm Spider-Man. Okay, the next building is waiting for us. Let's go, wow. Okay, that was tough. Okay, this is a really cool thing. It's good that there aren't many infected monsters here. Otherwise, it would be a complete mess. Okay, enchanted book. So far, we're pretty lucky with the loot, guys. By the way, for some reason, some boxes can only be opened with a help of a crowbar. In one of these, I found a note. There is no more room in our warehouse. We need to transfer everything to a backup warehouse. Now we just need to wait for Edward, who lives in the central high-rise building, so that he opens the doors to us to the dam. Then, I realized that just like that, I probably wouldn't be able to get into the dam, so I decided to find Edward's apartment the next day. With the help of a grappling hook and my awesome parkour skills, I quickly found the building that I needed. Friends, welcome to the home program. Today, we're going to visit Edward. And from below, by the way, we even have monster friends. But even this will not stop us from visiting. Break for a snack? I am also human. Having quickly dealt with the monsters, I began to loot chess. Found some food, a weapon ammo, and also a key to the dam. At that time, to be honest, I was worried about only one thing. The place where I made my overnight stay is surrounded by a huge number of beacons, which means that I huge number of infected monsters can appear there, so I thought that I should change the place of my home. I collected a few interior items, and the next morning I began to look for a place for my new base. I decided to choose the same building with a box and parkour. Firstly, it was close enough to my train, and secondly, there was a convenient opening in order to make an entrance there. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of work to be done here. There's a hell of a lot of cobwebs and foliage, ugh. I decided not to waste any wood supplies on my train and just dug up some more spruce. I made the floor of the building completely from scratch. For the next whole day, I made lighting, arranged furniture, and the apartment began to look quite cozy. In order not to run for resources every time, I even made a small storage unit. Well, of course, I made a farm right in the apartment. I decided to plant some wheat as to not waste my supplies in the future. The next morning, my base was complete. Welcome to the hallway. I think it looks pretty good. Here's my storage unit. There must be a fire extinguisher. This is my bedroom, and this is my workplace. Look at this cool creeper. Well, here, of course, is my favorite farm. The dam. Will I be able to find the details that I just need to go further? That's what I should find out when I go here the next day. Okay, there it is. It's just massive. When I climbed up to the top, I saw a bunch of monsters that blocked my path. Come on! Oh, there's another one! How many lives do they have? Okay, nobody's here. Uh, it's not opening. Oh, okay. Okay, let's start going down. Of course it was scary. I practically went through this whole survival and I didn't want to die at all. I had to be careful. Having made my way down into the insides of the dam and killing all the monsters, I finally found the necessary components. And after that, I immediately began to get out. Okay, great. We can fix the railroad now. In the morning, I immediately began to repair the rails. Nevertheless, on the way, I came across some location, but I didn't find anything particularly interesting there. Oh, what's up? Do you want my apple? Well, I can't give you my apple, but I can give you a rotten segment. Okay, bye. Okay, you just need to right click and... Oh, great! Another part, guys! Let's go! Stop! Attention, the horde is approaching? Wait, what? What does that mean? Okay, I don't know what that means, but I think we should get the hell out of here. There are more and more monsters! Okay, we have to run! Okay, carefully. Apple, apple. Why are there so many of them? Okay, I have to use my grappling hook. Okay, I, I, no, 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 no. Come on, one HP, one HP. Okay, okay, we have to run. Okay, okay, get this. Take it, get this. Okay, uh, my ammo can, okay, what's going on? Okay, just get on the train, get on the train. That's it, full throttle. Let's go, let's get out of here, quick. We just overcame the most difficult location in this survival. And just ahead is the last place that we will visit in this survival. This is our new home, the Oasis. And finally, after such a long journey, we got to the final destination, where you can start your life all over again. Okay guys, I can't honestly believe this right now, but it looks like we've arrived at the end of the road, guys. Okay... Wow, we actually got to the very end of the railway. Okay, so there's something here, let's see. A ticket to the infected zone, okay, <laughs> not a bad easter egg. At the moment, I was incredibly happy because I thought that one of the most difficult survivals was already over, but I was dead wrong. I saw a path along which I decided to walk, and as a result, I reached an interesting building. Okay, 
Look at this house. It's so cool. There is even a little pond here. Look. When I went inside the house and onto the balcony, I understood why this place is called the Oasis. In the center, there was a massive lake. Apparently, it is because of that lake that this place is called the Oasis. Okay, there's a note here. Let's read it. Oasis. A place made to continue life after the infected apocalypse. You found it. You are able to go all the way to this fabulous place where you can start all over again. But there are still a couple of nuances. Go down the basement, you'll find out everything there. Okay, what is this plot twist? I thought it was already done. Um, okay, here's the entrance. Let's go take a look. Okay, interesting. Apparently, it was some kind of bunker. After looting a couple of boxes, one thing seemed very strange to me. Why were there turrets and AKs in the boxes? It scared me a little, but then I finally understood everything. Okay, there's a note here. The last frontier. You thought it was the end, but it's not. Now you have to protect the oasis and prove that you deserve to live here. Very soon, the infection will come here and you have to stop it. Then you will pass the survival. I think you have a couple of days. I advise you to build a defense. Okay, what kind of plot twist is this? Come on! This was very unexpected for me, because I was planning to calmly end my survival, but it seems not everything is so simple. Okay, there is no time to waste. I have to build the defenses right now. First of all, given that we already arrived at the final station, I decided to unload all of my wagons, because there was a huge amount of things in them. Then, I decided to clear some territory for my defense. There was no time to sleep, so I did this all night. Morning, and today, I have already begun to build my bastion. In addition, I also found turrets that will also help me if the same infected suddenly attack me, as well as barbed wire, which if anything, will delay and cause additional damage. It took me all day to build up the defense. Also, walking at night through this forest, I suddenly found some ruins with a little surprise. Okay guys, I found something in the forest. It turns out that there are some small dungeons here too. Okay, let's open the box. Diamonds, iron, and ammo. Okay. Okay, one more chest. Oh, wh what? A chest with a surprise. Okay. Crap. Claw. Can I eat it? Wow. Okay, okay. Another box. First aid kits, ammo. Not bad. Day 98. And as it turned out, tomorrow, I was facing the final battle. Okay, look. The first beacon has appeared. Beacons are coming, guys. They're appearing. Come on, look at how many infected there are. How many beacons are there? Oh my god. Look how many monsters are there as well. Oh my. Okay, come on. The turret's under attack. Okay, okay, okay. The flying ones are coming as well. No. Okay, first aid kit, first aid kit. Quick! Okay, they broke the second turret over there. No! Okay, Apple, Apple! Quick! How many are there? I understood that there were more and more of them. But at the same time, I understood that I only had one chance to survive and complete the survival. I had to make the most of it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Okay, guys, I think we did it! Wow! The battle was not easy, but I did it. There was practically nothing left of the defensive position at all. But the most important thing is that I can proudly say, we have completed this survival. Wait, look guys, my hearts have become normal and not hardcore. Oh my god, it's real. No way. On the same day, I ran to the house on the mountain, where a new chest has already spawned. I opened it and read the note. You have completed the survival. On behalf of the entire team, we congratulate you. There are still many undiscovered secrets secrets in the oasis that are waiting for you. Maybe you will find out what the next survival will be, or maybe something even cooler. Good luck. Another survival completed. Another incredible story on my channel. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, good luck to everyone, and goodbye.